Okay, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to look at rocks and rock cycle. Now, rocks can be broadly divided into three categories, igneous rocks, metamorphic rocks, and sedimentary rocks. Each of these rock categories can further be divided into a number of different types. So for example, granite is one type of igneous rocks, rock. Marble is one type of metamorphic rock. Sandstone is one type of sedimentary rock. Now, rocks are very useful. Indeed, they are resources that are used in a number of industries. If we think, for example, in the area of agriculture, where soil is very important, one of the main processes that create soil is weathering, and weathering is the breaking up of rocks. So when rocks break down by weathering and it creates regolith, the regolith is mixed with water, it is mixed with organic material, it is mixed with air, and it creates the soil in which we can plant our crops. Rocks are also very important in the area of mining. That's because rocks are made up of minerals and mining involves the extraction of minerals. Rocks are also very important resources in the construction industry. So for example, igneous rocks, one type of igneous rock is granite. And granite can be used to make countertops, it can be used to make tiles, etc. Another important rock that can be used in the construction industry is marble. All right, and marble again can be used to make uh, uh, tiles and countertops. One type of sedimentary rock is chalk. And we know chalk is important as a writing instrument. Now, rocks are constantly being formed and destroyed. They may be formed as well as destroyed by internal forces, that is forces that originate inside of the earth, such as tension, compression, plate movements, volcanic activities, folding, faulting. These forces and processes can cause rocks to be formed and they can also contribute to rocks being destroyed. Rocks can also be formed and destroyed by external forces. External forces are forces that originate above the Earth's surface. These include weathering, erosion, transportation, deposition. Now, there are different ways that rocks can be destroyed. Uh, rocks can be destroyed to create sediments, all right? Two of the processes that can contribute to rocks being destroyed to create sediments are weathering and erosion, which are both processes of denudation. And denudation processes are processes that lower the land. So when weathering takes place or when erosion takes place, the rocks which are a part of the land 
will be broken down into sediment. But this is not the only way that rocks can be destroyed. Rocks can also be destroyed and be converted to magma. One example is where at a convergent plate boundary, a, an oceanic crust or an oceanic plate may sink beneath another plate and sink into the mantle and exposed to high temperatures, which can cause melting. Now the melting of the rocks will change the rocks into magma, right? So that's another way in which the rocks may be destroyed. Now, after the rocks are destroyed to create new material, that material may be subjected to different processes and some of these processes may cause, may, may cause new materials, new types of rocks to be formed. So for example, if a rock is subjected to erosion and weathering, forming sediments, these sediments may be transported from their original position and may be deposited once more and when they are deposited, then the sediments may be laid down in layers and become compacted or squeezed together. And then cementing agents may help the different sediments to stick together. At the end of the process, a sedimentary rock may be created. And one type of sedimentary rock which might be created from that process is a conglomerate. Rocks that are destroyed by melting to form magma may, the, the, the magma may be subjected to various processes and these processes may result in a new rock being formed. So for example, the magma inside of the earth may become cooled and due to the cooling of the magma, it may crystallize and harden to form a, a new rock and the new rock would be an intrusive rock. And an example of an intrusive rock is granite. Now, rocks that melt, if the material is found on the surface, it is not going to be called magma, it's going to be called lava. The lava again can cool and it can form igneous rocks. In this case, the, ign the igneous rock will be extrusive igneous rock. And an example is basalt. Now, as we have just seen, igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks are formed from materials which resulted from the original rock being destroyed. Now, metamorphic rock is unique in that uh, its formation results from a direct process of the original rock changing into a new rock. All right, so it doesn't have to change into a new material before it becomes a new rock. So heat and pressure, if the rock is subjected to heat and pressure, for example, at a collision zone, we, the, the, the rocks may be 
squeeze together and the, 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 the temperature that they are subjected to along with the pressure that they are subjected to can cause the rock to change to a completely different rock. So for example, marble may be formed when limestone is subjected to heat and pressure. Marble is a type of metamorphic rock. So metamorphic rocks are called changed rocks. Remember, metamorphic rocks, the formation of metamorphic rock is a little different from sedimentary and igneous rocks because they are directly formed from the original rock. And the factors that are responsible for the creation of, of, of metamorphic rocks are heat and pressure. So this diagram shows the rock cycle. The rock cycle may be defined as the continuous process by which rocks are formed, destroyed, and formed again, all right? If you look at this diagram, you will see the three different rock types. So we have igneous rocks here, we have sedimentary rocks here, and we have metamorphic rocks. Notice, for igneous rocks to be formed, igneous rocks are formed from a material called magma. If it's inside of the earth, lava, if it is on the surface. And we have to ask ourselves, how does this magma form? Magma form when another rock has melted. How does the magma change to the igneous rock? Well, the magma needs to cool and harden for the igneous rock to be formed. Then here we have our sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are also formed from another material. In this case, the material are sediments. How are these sediments formed? The sediments are formed when the original rocks are subjected to weathering and erosion, which break up the rock into different pieces. How do these different pieces of rocks get to form a sedimentary rock? Well, the sediments are compacted or squeezed together and they are cemented together to form our sedimentary rock. And then we have our metamorphic rock. We said that the metamorphic rocks are different from the other two types of rocks. They are called change rocks because they form directly from another rock. So it could be another, uh, it could be another metamorphic rock or it could have been an igneous rock or it could have been a sedimentary rock. rock. As long as those rocks are subjected to heat and pressure, they will change and become a new rock. And that new rock will be a metamorphic rock. All right, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please also leave a comment. Thank you.